Welcome to Lecture Online. Now let's do an example so we can understand the Hamiltonian a little bit better. We're going to do a simple example, the oscillator. So here we can see that we have a spring that allows the mass to oscillate back and forth. Let's call this the mass m. And notice that when the value is negative, in other words, when the position is to the left of the equilibrium point, the acceleration is to the right, and when the position of the mass is to the right, a positive value for x, then you can see the acceleration is negative. So keep that in mind later on when we see the answer, we'll be able to make some sense out of that. Since the Hamiltonian is defined as the, as the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, also written as T plus V, we can say that the Hamiltonian is one half mv squared plus one half kx squared, the potential energy of the spring. We can then write it in generalized coordinates, x dot, so that here we have x dot and we have x, and then we can write it as a function of momentum, at least this portion of the Hamiltonian. Remember that P, the momentum, is equal to mv, which means it's equal to m times x dot, and momentum squared is equal to m squared times x dot squared. So since we have an m x dot squared, we multiply this times m, divide by m, and then we can then replace m squared x dot squared by p squared. Now we're going to take the partial of the Hamiltonian with respect to x, and that will give us when we take the derivative, this of course doesn't matter. Here we get 2 times 1 half, which is 1, times kx. And then we take the partial of the Hamiltonian with respect to momentum. So this no longer matters, that goes to 0. And here we get this is equal to 2 times 1 half, which is 1. That will be 1 over m times p. Now 1 over m times p, we can rewrite that. This can be written as 1 over m times m times v. Notice that the m's then cancel out, which is equal to v, which is equal to x dot. Now we're going to take the derivative with respect to time of this component right here. So the derivative with respect to time of the partial of h with respect to p is equal to x double dot. It's simply the derivative of x with respect to time, or x dot with respect to time, which is x double dot, which means acceleration. Now we know that the, part, that the mass times the derivative with respect to time of the partial of the Hamiltonian with respect to p plus the partial of the Hamiltonian with respect to the generalized coordinate x, that must equal zero. Since that's true, we can then go ahead and plug in these values. Since this is equal to x dot, we can then write that m times, the, oop, I want to, want, want to write acceleration, I'll just write as x dot, mx dot, plus the partial of h with respect to x, which is right here, which is kx, is equal to zero. And this then defines the equations of motion for the simple harmonic oscillator. We can rewrite this a little bit, so you can look at the familiarity with this equation. We can say that x double dot plus k over m times x is equal to zero, and then when we say that omega squared is equal to k over m, we can then say that x double dot plus omega squared x equal to zero. Which means if we want to write the equations of that, we can then say that x as a function of omega and t, or I should say x as a function of t, because omega is a constant in this case, that would be equal to the amplitude times either the sine or the cosine, we can use the cosine, of omega t. So that would be the equation of oscillation that comes out of this differential equation. You can also see that if we move this over to the other side, we can, and then we turn the equation around, we can say that minus kx is equal to m times x double dot, and then this here would be equal to the force of the spring on the mass, based on here, Hooke's law, we can say that f is equal to minus kx. So minus k can be written as f, and m times x double dot can be written as ma. Another way of looking at the equation, this is simply another way of writing f equals ma. So using a simple oscillator, you can see that the Hamiltonian can be used to find the equations of motion and to make you understand that we're simply solving f equals ma in a different format. And that's how it's done.